Welcome to video 8.1, where we are going to be talking about create, read, update, and delete operations in CouchDB. And topics covered in the video are as simple as that, create, read, update, and delete. So let's get started. There are two primary ways that we can interact with data in CouchDB, and that is either using the Photon interface or to issue commands over HTTP using REST. Now, Photon is a very nice graphical user interface. However, you'll find that almost all access to CouchDB in the real world is going to happen by issuing uh, REST commands over HTTP. So to illustrate this, we're going to be using curl, which is a utility that allows us to send and receive raw HTTP requests and responses. Now, throughout this video, you might need to adjust your commands just a little bit to match whether you're using your local installation of CouchDB or connecting to our shared CouchDB server, but just kind of pay close attention uh, to exactly what's going on and you should be able to see the uh, places that you need to adjust what you're doing a little bit. But before we get started with that, I'd like to take just a moment to illustrate what curl is doing to perhaps uh, make this interaction between uh, ourselves and CouchDB a little bit less mysterious. So I'm going to switch over to the server where I have CouchDB installed and we're gonna start going through some of this demo. So in order to demonstrate what curl is doing, I'm first just going to open up a web browser and navigate to a web page. And let's say www.bower.uh.edu. And many of you probably know that on most web pages, you can right click and select view page source and see the HTML code that is used to generate that web page. So when I ask for this web page at bower.uh.edu, my web browser is actually sending a small string of text to the web server, uh, asking the web server to send back the HTML for that page. And the web server sends back this text document with some HTML markup and JavaScript and things like that. Then my web browser parses and interprets this page in order to generate this uh, nice graphical version of the web page. So curl is actually doing a very similar thing. If we were to say curl dash get https colon slash slash www.bower.uh.edu, we get all of this text in response. And if we compare this to uh, what we see when we view page source, well, it's exactly the same thing, doc type HTML, uh, HTML class, head, meta, meta, all of these things, the Bauer College of Business is Houston's most comprehensive business school, right? This is exactly the same thing that our web browser is getting and interpreting and showing us the HTML for. So when we interact with CouchDB, we're basically just sending uh, REST commands over HTTP, and then CouchDB sends back JSON objects over HTTP. And it's very similar to the way other web traffic works. So with uh, that explanation out of the way, I'm gonna go ahead and open up a new browser window to connect to our Couch management interface known as Photon. And I'm going to do that by going to the URL, http colon slash slash localhost colon 5984, that's the port that CouchDB runs on, forward slash underscore utils, utils, which is just the URL for this Photon management interface. So if you're connecting to our shared CouchDB environment, instead of localhost, you'll have the URL of the server that I'm going to provide to you. But localhost is just kind of a uh, shortcut to connect to something that is running on your computer. And if you followed the tutorial video for installing CouchDB on your computer, you have CouchDB running on your computer. So here we're prompted to log in to CouchDB. And if you watched my uh, installation video, you'll know that my CouchDB installation has a very secure password of password 
one, two, three, four. And I'm telling you this out loud because you're going to see me using this in the examples when we connect using curl. So uh, I would strongly suggest that you have a better password than that on your installation of CouchDB and certainly don't create a YouTube video telling everyone uh, what your password is. But by the time this is uh, published on YouTube, this CouchDB server and this password are all going to be destroyed anyway. So admin and my password and then I log in and now I am connected to my CouchDB instance. So I'm going to go ahead and make this window a little bit bigger. And uh, here on the left side of the Photon interface, we have uh, all of the different categories of tasks that we can do within CouchDB. And uh, we'll be looking at some of this in a little bit more detail in other videos. But for right now, under this database option, we can see we currently do not have any databases created. So I'm going to resolve this by clicking this button that says create database. It asks for a name of a database. I'm going to say students and that this is a non partitioned database. And when I click create, you see we now have a database called students. It says zero bytes in size has zero documents and note that we didn't define any schema or anything like that. Just like we didn't define a schema in MongoDB, but we have a database called students that is now ready to receive documents. So to create a document, it's as easy as clicking on the database and then clicking create document. CouchDB automatically generates an ID value that looks quite similar to the ID value in MongoDB. We could change this to any value we want to, but I like just sticking with the automatically generated ID. And to create a document, we can just copy and paste any well-formed JSON that we would like. So I'm going to create a student named Christy Drake, who is a sophomore and has taken 45 hours and has an address of this. And just like with MongoDB and just like with our other JSON objects, our attributes can be strings, which are wrapped in quotes. They can be numbers. They can be other objects, which is the case with address here. They can be arrays of values. One thing that is a little bit different about CouchDB as opposed to MongoDB is that uh, while having the quotation marks around the uh, name of the attribute was optional in MongoDB, it is something that is required in CouchDB. But this should overall look pretty familiar. And when we click Create Document, now we have a document in our students database. We can click on that to see what we have. And this is just the uh, exactly what we put in uh, with the addition of one new field called underscore rev. Now this field is automatically generated and updated by CouchDB. And this is CouchDB keeping track of every time a document is revised. And we'll see where this comes in very handy for CouchDB being able to resolve conflicting updates when we have replication between multiple CouchDB servers. So we'll be looking at that in a future video. But for now, we can just back out of this and see that we have one document we have created. Now, in order to insert a document via REST, we're going to use curl at the command line and our curl command is going to look like this. We're gonna start with curl dash X post. So this is just starting curl and then telling it we're going to post a document. And then the connection string for CouchDB, which looks something like this, HTTP colon slash slash and then the username that we're connecting with, in this case, admin, a colon, the password for that account, which in this case is password1234, at the URL of our server, which in this case is localhost, a colon, then 5984, which is the port that CouchDB runs on, then slash the database that we're inserting the document into, and then another slash to end the URL followed by dash H content type colon application slash JSON. This is just something we have to include to have a well-formed HTTP request. 
and then dash D and the JSON object that we want to write into the database. And notice we have a lot of kind of ugly backslashes here, and this is something that is specific to Windows. When we execute a command from the command line in Windows, your quotation mark has a special meaning to uh, the command line. So in order to tell Windows that we want to actually send a quotation mark, and not just that it should interpret the quotation mark, we have to escape the quotation mark. And we do that by putting a backslash in front of it. Okay, so like right here, the Windows command line is interpreting this quotation mark and this quotation mark because it doesn't have a backslash in front of it. But when we put the backslash in front of the quotation mark, we're saying, no, don't interpret this quotation mark, but that this quotation mark is part of the JSON object that we're wanting to send to the server. So it's a little bit confusing and convoluted, but just take a moment to try to absorb what's going on there. So we are posting to our CouchDB server at this port, this database, this JSON object. So let's go back over to our CouchDB server and execute this. So I have a number of these uh, queries just saved in a notepad file here. I'm going to copy and paste those, but this is just what we looked at in the uh, previous slide. Curl X post. Here's the connection string for CouchDB, content type application JSON, and then here is the object that I am uh, passing into CouchDB to a student named Edgar Franklin, who is a freshman with 18 hours and has this address. When we hit enter, CouchDB says, okay, this was successful. Here is the ID I generated, and here is the revision of this document. Now, if we flip back over to Photon and uh, just kind of refresh this, you see we now have our two documents, and here is the document that we just created. So that is great. And just for fun, I'm going to go ahead and insert a couple more documents. And we can look in our database now and you see we have four documents. Now on to reading. Uh, reading is pretty straightforward in Photon. All we do is click on the record and we can see uh, the content of that document. If we click on this JSON button up here in the corner, it'll open up a new window and show us just exactly what is going to be sent to the client. Now to read a document using curl, uh, we just need to know the, ID, the value of the document's ID. And we can say curl and then our connection string, 5984, slash students, slash, and then the value of the ID. And when we hit enter, we get back the JSON document that is stored in the database. And notice that when we clicked on this JSON button, this URL that we get sent to is just exactly what we are connecting to with curl. Okay, so all curl is doing is downloading uh, this JSON object from this URL. Now I mentioned just a moment ago that this underscore rev field that CouchDB adds for us is going to be something that's uh, very important in how CouchDB deals with uh, addressing possible conflicting updates. And we need to know the value of this rev field every time we update a document. And also every time we update a document, the value of underscore rev also gets updated. So let's go back to our Photon uh, interface and make some changes to one of our students. So let's, uh, let's imagine Christy Drake, who is a sophomore and has completed 45 hours now has completed an additional 12 hours, so she's up to 57 hours. When we click Save Changes, well, we've updated that document now. That's pretty easy to do in Photon. 
And note that when we click on the document, we have a new value for rev. And it's pretty easy to spot because the uh, while this is a very long pseudo random uh, string of characters, this first number indicates how many revisions there have been. So if we go to 60 hours instead of two dash in this pseudo random string, we should see that it's now three dash and a pseudo random string. Now, one thing to point out that while we did have the option in MongoDB of telling MongoDB that we want to update only one specific field instead of the entire document, there is no such option in CouchDB. Every time we do an update, we are updating the entire document. And this isn't terribly obvious in the Photon interface because it's kind of taking care of all of that for us in the background. But we'll see when we switch over to curl that we could very easily accidentally destroy an entire document if we try to update only a single field without uh, updating everything else. So let's go back to our command line and try to update a document and see what happens. So in order to update a document, we have to specify both the ID and the rev values. And the syntax for doing this is to say curl dash X post. Okay, so we're not getting, we're posting at this point. Uh, here's our connection string for the CouchDB server, which is uh, just the same as what we had used before. Uh, the dash H is just the same as what we used before. But now in the dash D, we're going to specify the ID and we're going to specify the revision, and then we're going to specify the rest of the JSON object that we want to update. And in this case, we're actually gonna wind up really messing up this document because all we're doing is specifying a new value for this attribute hours. And if we don't specify values for other, all the other attributes, that entire document is just going to be replaced with this document. So. Um, I actually can't use these IDs because these are different than uh, what has been created. So we're going to recreate this based on the values that are currently in our database. So let's actually find another student to work with here. Um, yeah, here's our second student, Edgar Franklin, who is a freshman who has completed 18 hours. So let's imagine we want to update Edgar's hours from 18 to 21, there's two pieces of critical information we need, the value of ID, so I'm going to copy that and paste that into my query over here that you'll see in just a moment. And then we also need the value for the revision. So I'm gonna select copy and put that into my query. So from my command line, oops. From the command line, I am going to curl dash x post. Here's my connection string to HBase. And here is the ID of the document we want to update, the revision of the document we want to update. And here's the value that we're trying to update. But recall, this is not right because this is going to really mess up our document because it's replacing the entire document with just what is shown in this JSON object. So I'm going to hit enter. It says, okay, true, that was, uh, that was successful. We have the same ID, but note we have now a new value for revision. If we go back and look at Edgar's document now, we see all of the data about Edgar is now no longer in the document. So this is not great. Another thing that I'll point out here is if we try to run this same exact command with this same value of revision, we get an error that says there's a document update conflict and we'll see more about that in a later video. But now if we want to fix up Edgar's, uh, Edgar's document, we can uh, actually just from right here, query that document and get this value for revision. And this is just the same thing that we saw in the Photon interface, but I'm going to copy that into 
another update operation and add back all of Edgar's information. Okay, so I'm just doing another update to this same document that now has a value of two dash and this long string for revision. So this should now put Edgar back in a nicer state. Note that we have, again, a new value for revision. If we go back and look at Edgar, yeah, all of his information has been restored, so that's good. And of course, if we tried to run another update query with an invalid value for revision, we're again going to get a message saying that there is a document update conflict. Now for the final operation of our create, read, update, and delete, we're deleting. So it's pretty simple, uh, as you might expect in Photon to delete a document. We can just bring it up and then click on this delete button. Say yes, we're sure, and the document is deleted just as easy as that. If we want to delete using a rest operation, uh, just like when we did our update, we need both the value of the ID and the value of the revision. So if we want to delete Edgar Franklin, uh, I'm going to need to go ahead and copy the current value of revision. And then from the command line, we say curl dash X delete. Here's our connection string to the server and actually all the way to the specific document that we want to delete. Okay, so student slash and then the document ID. And then in the dash H, instead of what we've been saying before, content type application JSON, we say if match and then the value of the underscore rev field. And then we do this, as long as revision matches, then we get a, a response back that says, okay, here's the uh, ID of the document that I deleted. And then notice that CouchDB has assigned a revision value for the deletion. This is kind of a weird thing. Why do we have a value of revision for a document that we've deleted? Well, at this point in time, the document has not actually been deleted from the database altogether. It's just been replaced by a blank document that has been marked as deleted. So the data is no longer accessible, but just the way uh, CouchDB keeps track of everything, that document ID is still there and it still has a revision value. So if we go back and refresh our students database, we see that we no longer have uh, that value for uh, Edgar that we just deleted. If we were to try to return um, this document using curl, we'll get a response back that says the document is not found because the document has been deleted. So CouchDB knows it used to be there and knows that it is no longer there. And to wrap things up, I wanted to show just a few other commands that we can execute uh, via REST. So if we wanted to see all of our databases, we can just curl for underscore all underscore DBs. And we get a list of all of the databases that are currently in CouchDB. If we wanted to create a new database, we can say curl dash X put, then the connection string for our database, and then whatever database we want to create. So we could say something like test database. Okay, and we get a response back that says true, and now we have a new database created, in this case called test database, that is ready to receive documents. If we run the query asking to see all databases, we see we now have two databases, students and test database. If I flip back over to uh, Photon and look at my databases, you can see that test database has now been created there. If we want to delete this database, it is pretty straightforward in Photon. Just click on the trash can icon here next to the database. And just to make sure you're not accidentally doing this, it requires you to type the name of the database in order to delete it. So now our test database database has been deleted. And we can, of course, also delete a database via curl. And in order to do that, 
we're going to say curl dash x delete and then the URL of the database we want to delete. So if I want to get rid of this student's database, I can just run this command. And just that quickly, we no longer have any databases at all in CouchDB. So you have to be careful with these commands while you're relaxing with the couch.